Do you believe the demons torture people? Well, maybe this case of Ricardo Caputo will make you reconsider your stance, or at least think more about it. From the early to late 70s, a serial killer murdered unsuspecting victims from coast to coast. His first known victim started with Ricardo killing his girlfriend, Natalie Brown, in 1971. Ricardo and Natalie had been dating for over a year and even discussed getting married. On one fateful summer night, Ricardo stabbed Natalie multiple times. Afterwards, he called the police to confess to what he'd done. The authorities discovered that Caputo was Argentinian and had come to America the year before. Back home, he was treated for mental illness. He was given a mental health examination while in custody and was declared not competent to stand trial. After this, he was sent to Matawan State Mental Hospital. While under the care of psychologist Judith Becker, a relationship was formed between the two. In 1973, Caputo was transferred to a minimum security asylum that allowed him to leave during the day, which in turn allowed his relationship with Dr. Becker to grow. Dr. Becker took him home to meet her family, not telling them that he was her patient, instead telling them that he worked at the asylum. In October 1974, Dr. Becker's family became concerned after they hadn't heard from her in a while. They went to her home and found her body in the bedroom. She had been beaten and strangled with a stocking. Her money and car were missing, but most importantly, her boyfriend Caputo was gone. Caputo left New York and traveled to California. In 1975, he met Barbara Ann Taylor and began dating her. Caputo and Barbara planned a rendezvous to Yosemite National Park. Since no one knew of Caputo's crimes, they were not concerned about the trip until Barbara went missing. Her body was found inside her apartment March 31, 1975. She had been beaten to death. By the time she was found, Caputo was long gone. He left his fingerpr fingerprints behind. Five days later, he was detained in Texas where he gave the false name of Ricardo Diaz. He was placed in an immigration center since he didn't have any paperwork to verify his identity. On April 7, 1975, Caputo and two other detainees overtook the guards in a daring escape. They stole a car and fled to Mexico. All but Caputo were captured by authorities. He was slicker than hair grease. He settled into Mexico City and started a relationship with Laura Gomez. They lived together for two years before her body was found beaten and tortured to death on October 3, 1977. The autopsy revealed that she had been two months pregnant. Caputo went hiding, went into hiding for years. At the time, he was number one on the FBI's TMO's wanted list. Caputo resurfaced in March 1994 to turn himself in to the police. He said that his victims were haunting him and he was scared that he would kill again. While on the run, he murdered twice, had children, and traveled. He managed to elude the authorities by using assumed identities. He pled guilty to the murders of Natalie Brown and Judith Becker and was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Caputo was suspected in at least two other murders. One, the 1981 murder of Devon Green, who was killed in Los Angeles, California. One of her co-workers identified Caputo as someone who worked with them at a restaurant before Devon was murdered. Another murder he is suspected of committing was that of author Jacqueline Bernard, 64 years old, in 1983. She was found killed in her Manhattan apartment. Two years after her murder, a private investigator worker on the case got a phone call claiming that her killer's name was Ricardo and that Ricardo had bragged about killing her and several other women and a few men. Her landlord picked Caputo out of a photo lineup as the man that had been seen trying to break in shortly before her murder. It is not known whether Caputo actually committed these crimes, but I do hope that families of the victims get justice, whether he or someone else is the killer.